Hi. Now in this question, we're given that the weight in grams of beans in a tin is normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation 7.8. Given that 10% of the tins contain less than 200 grams, find the value of mu for three marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't done so already, just give you a moment then to pause the video. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Now you might like to fast forward just to the end if you want to see the method or the answer. Otherwise, I'll take you slowly through the work solution. Now when I get something like this, first of all, I want to uh, define a random variable. So I'm going to say let x, and it's capital X here, be the random variable. We'll just abbreviate that to RV random variable and it's going to be the weight okay the weight in grams okay we we'll just put g there weight in grams now that will be where x is distributed normally we don't know the mean so we'll just put that in then as mu and then the second parameter here is always the variance, that is the standard deviation squared. So I'm just going to write 7.8 squared there rather than actually work out the value of 7.8 squared. Next I'd want to draw up a couple of normal distributions. So something like this, okay, one above the other. We've got our random variable x here. This is the standardized normal distribution z. So we'll label the diagram up. We've got the mean here, mu. And remember, in the standardized normal distribution, the mean is 0. And then we've got 10% of the tins contain less than 200 grams. So that means the area to the left of 200 has got to be 10% or 0.1. So that means that the 200 must go to the left of mu here. Okay, So this will be 200 so that this area here is 10% or as a decimal just simply 0.1. I'm going to call this observed value x1. So x1 equals 200. And then what we do is we project this value down onto the standardized normal graph. And I'm going to label this value z1. And this area to the left of z1, well that 2 is going to be 0.1. Now we should be familiar with the fact that any z value on here is always equal to the corresponding observed value from this distribution minus the mean, mu that is, divided by the standard deviation, sigma. So when it comes to working out what z1 is here, z1 will equal the observed value, which is 200, minus the mean, mu, which we're trying to find, divided by the standard deviation, which we know is 7.8. Now we know that the probability that x is less than 200 is equal to 0.1. And this statement corresponds to the fact that the probability of z being less than z1, okay, must also be equal to 0.1. Now, if we can find out what z1 is, we can now rearrange the equation to solve for mu. And so how do we work out what z1 is? Well, there's two ways that we can do it, but it has to be from tables. And there's two types of tables that we could use, and I'll show you both methods. If we were to take the inverse normal tables, this is just an extract, where we're normally given the probability of z being greater than the observed value z is equal to p. So if that's the case, what we've got to do is look at our graph here, and 
we've got to look at the symmetry of it. We've got to think, well, OK, this table gives us values greater than the Z value on the right here. So if I reflect this to the other side and think about 0.1 being over here, P being 0.1 in other words, then I can see from this entry in the tables here, when P equals 0.1, the corresponding Z value would be 1.2816. But that would be on this side here. But because of the symmetry, if I mirror it over the other side here, the Z1 value here will be the negative value, negative 1.2816. So I can see that from tables, let's just put that in, from tables, Z1 would be equal to minus 1.2816. But it's not the only way of achieving this value. The other way is that you could look at the commutative normal distribution tables. And they will give you the probability of being less than a, an observed value, z. And that's represented by this area here. Problem is, though, the observed value z that we've got is always on the right of our mean here, 0. OK? So if you've got these tables, then what we look for is this area here. Well, we know that the area on this side here, this white space here, that area would be 0 0.1, leaving this shaded area as being 90% or 0 0.9. So what we need to do is look in this column under phi z, the cumulative probability, and we look for a value close to 0.9. You'll notice it's not as accurate as the table that we've got here. So which of these two values is closest to 0.9? Well, it has to be this one here. And the corresponding Z value would have been 1.28. So this value here would have been 1.28. But again, by symmetry, if we mirror this on the other side, it will be minus 1.28. So we get an answer very similar to this, not as accurate, OK? But uh, normally there's kind of leeway given in exams anyway, depending on what value you pick here. So I'll use this one here, though, all right? So all we need to say then is that, therefore, our value for Z1, which is 200 minus mu, over 7.8 is equal to negative 1.2816. So it's just a question then of rearranging this and solving for mu. And if you rearrange this, let's say we multiply both sides by 7.8. That will give us 200 minus mu equals minus 1.2816 multiplied by 7.8. And then if I take that term from both sides and add mu to both sides, this will rearrange out to mu equaling 200 and then plus 1.2816 multiplied by 7.8. OK, hopefully you're OK with that. I had to jump to that stage because I can see that I'm running out of room. And if you work this out, you end up with 209.996 and so on. And if we give this, say, to three significant figures, then this is going to be 210 to 3SF, three significant figures. Now, hopefully you've got that. And I always would encourage you to draw sketches anyway, with one graph directly above the other. If you do that, you can check to see whether you know your Z values should be negative, if your areas look uh, OK, and if your value for mu looks sensible. It's got to be a value greater than the 200 here. So I'll definitely go for diagrams. OK?